Every complex data structure has its own basic elements that contain the most important core information. In Wellon such elements are called items. Items in Wellon database are grouped in item sets or classes. You can get all item classes available for user in the login response under key classes. Wellon items include user, unit, unit group, resource, root and retranslator. User is an item that correlates with a person, an employee that will perform different actions in Wellon. Unit is an item that stands for each individual control thing together with a tracking device. This can be a commercial vehicle with a tracker, your pet with a pet tracker or a refrigerator. Since units can perform similar functions or can be located in the same territory or they have similar features, they can be grouped together. To do this, in Wellon you have an item that is called unit group. When you do something with units or unit groups, assign drivers to them or generate reports, you would like to carefully organize and store this information, distributing rights among different users. You need a storage item. In Wellon we call this storage resource. You use Wellon primarily to make your logistics more efficient. Root is an item that helps you do it by creating detailed routes, schedules and rounds. Finally, Retranslator. It is an item that enables you to resend the data stored on Wellon to another server, either if you choose to do so or if you are obliged to do so by law. Every Wellon item contains common information, which is the same for all item entries, and specific information, which serves to distinguish between them. Common information. All Wellon items have an ID, a unique integer identification value by which items differ from one another. As regards item's name, all items have this property. But unlike ID, it needs not necessarily be unique, except the case with names of Wellon user entries. One more common property is custom and admin fields, a special key value storage that can be used for saving custom data, with the possibility of assigning extra rights to the admin users. Specific information. Since different item types serve different purposes, each of them has specific information that helps to solve specific problems. An example of item specific information would be image, because not all items have this property. Unlike items unit or unit group, Users and other items in Wellon do not have image. Other examples of specific information are as follows. User has settings flags. Unit has sensors. Unit group has list of its units and so on. All these properties are the item's specific information. The champion of the amount of specific information is the item resource. Such important data as poise, geofences, drivers, trailers, jobs, notifications are all properties of the resource. Full information about the item structure can be found in a special section on data format of SDK documentation. Data flags. Let's look at the item's format more closely. Information in items is grouped into semantic sections. And every section has a special hex number, the data flag. Since each data flag is a unique binary bit, the flags of different item types do not intersect. Such a structure makes it possible to easily combine data flags to specify the exact amount of item's data. This also gives us a possibility to get only the information we really need. For example, unit space or custom properties data flag 1 contains the following information ID, name, class, and user access. Custom property flag 2 contains object property with all units custom properties. If we need both of these flags, we just need to add them 1 plus 2 equals 3. This flag 3 gives us both unit general and unit custom properties. Flags are used in many well on requests and responses. You send to the server a request specifying the information you want to receive and the server returns the data you have requested. Creating items. 
In the core section of Remote API, you can see that each request begins with the word create and ends with the item class name. For example, create user, create unit, and so on. Using these requests, you can create new item of corresponding class. All such requests have some mandatory parameters, such as name, creator ID and data flag for the response data, and additional parameters, which are different for different item types. For example, for unit groups, resources and routes, you need no additional parameters. For user, you need to specify password. For unit, the hardware type. For a translator, special configuration. Example number one. Creating user. Let us look at create user request. It has four parameters. Creator ID, username, password and data flags. Creator ID is the ID of the user who will create a new user. Our new user will be a child user. In most cases, we'll use the current user ID. The newly created username is the name entered as a login to the system. Username is unique for each VLAN server. So, if the name is taken, you will receive an error response. Parameter password is the new user's password which the user needs to log in to VLAN. Data flag. The parameter discussed earlier shows which information about the new user we want to receive after the user is created. You will find more information on creating user in Create User section of SDK documentation. Now we will create a user using PHP. In tutorial 1 we have already talked about and showed examples of coding in PHP. First we need to create a new file. We will call it create underscore user dot php. In the file we add our previously used login sample with hello username phrase. So far it can do nothing else. If we check the page in browser we will see that it gives us greeting hello student. In our next step we get the user id of the current user as a result of login request. We set it as a user id variable and print it in browser in a new line. Now we need to set the parameters that will be used in request. For this purpose we will create an array with four parameters. The first parameter creator ID. Since we create from the current user, it will be our current user ID. The second parameter name will be used for authorization in VLAN. We'll call it student friend. Parameter number three is password. It can be a simple one. For example, QWERTY. The user will be able to change it later. And the last parameter is data flags, with the user information we want to receive. This time we will enter data flag 5, which is 1 plus 4, basic and billing information, information about creator and account. When the parameters are set, we perform a core create request and print the result. We also need to encode our parameters array to JSON. Let's check the result in browser. As you see, we have created a new user. The callback returned the data with the requested parameters. Creator ID is our current user ID. The name is student friend, as specified. And the user has its own unique ID shown in the ID field. If we try to repeat our request, we'll get an error 1002 response telling us that the user already exists. And the rule is, we cannot create two users with the same name. Now let's log in under our new user. To do this we will comment the core create user request and change login data above to that of the new user. As we log in, the browser says hello to the new user with its ID.